but we've just about cleared through this interesting little vault area, which means there is a decent amount of treasure to uh, investigate here. I sure wish we could wear cloaks, but unfortunately, not the case. A spirit shield resist cold and stealth amulet. Hmm. That's very tempting to take. Spirit shield is always a little bit scary, don't get me wrong. Just because we need that, uh, that those magic points so often just to keep ourselves alive, it's kind of risky to use them up. But at the same time, it of course in its own way is keeping us alive, just by leaving us with slightly more hit points to deal with. Let's drop the amulet of regen, drop identify scrolls, pick this up, debating to use it just if we uh, find ourselves in a situation where we need a lot more cold resistance maybe. And then let's just blast the heck out of the shapeshifter, shall we? Perfect. Before it takes the form of something truly scary. The plus six longsword of blind justice, spectral a subtraction of will. No, unfortunately not too interesting for us. And in fact, most of the treasure here is just completely unusable by our octopod here, but that's all good. I am just happy to be alive at this point. Some close calls, multiple close calls already at the start of our journey here. There we go. Onwards and upwards. And I guess we really fought most of the floor there at the end of the day. We caused enough noise and brought enough attention to ourselves to uh, take out at least most of the, the really tough bad boys. Let's see what changes. Our body sometimes deteriorates when taking damage. We're frail with negative 10% magic. We're no longer shouting. Yay! But we still sometimes lose our ability to read scrolls. So don't quite get a uh, reprieve from that stress yet at the very least. Oh geez, I'm not even in stone form. That's not what we want to see. Facing off against any monsters that hit decently hard. It's nice being at over 100 uh, health naturally, of course, but statue form does bring us up to a much safer, both total as well as uh, AC. That's the thing I was thinking about. The other defensive attributes. And of course, we get a very interesting chamber right away. Eyes of Desvestation, do Energy Bolt, okay. 3d20 actually isn't too bad. Oh, and Poison works on you, friends? Huh, that's shocking. For whatever reason, I just assumed that because you're kind of slime adjacent, that Poison wouldn't do a, a dang thing. But I'll take it, don't get me wrong. You can just keep radiating toxicity. Perfect. And then, onwards we go. Hopefully, not running into anything quite as scary as the last couple of floors have been, even though knowing the game and Zom here, that's most likely not going to be the case. Especially with all of the Earth Mages we keep running into. Get out of my head, game. So scary. Oops, let's head back around this way, game. In fact, we can probably fairly safely start heading down into here. Can blast around us to just keep all these bad boys from getting too close. Perfect. But we probably should really explore all of these little treasure troves, make sure to take out all these special eyes that might cause less than ideal status effects to uh, transpire. And that should be just about it. Perfect. I'm checking on ignition here. It's now down to 30% chance to fail. So that's getting really close. In fact, it looks like by the time we get through to the end of depths here, we should have that just fully castable, which you really love to see. Now LRD 
coming at us as well as being used by us. It's a, a messy situation to say the very least. As long as we're able to take out those Earth Mages in relatively quick time, we shouldn't have any trouble with the rest of these bad boys. Even those uh, Iron Trolls that would maybe give some trouble in certain characters aren't be too bad on a, a statue-formed octopode with uh, vampiric draining. I think it was during our very first session of the tournament that we had Ninth Settler in chat saying that get reaching or getting statue form and a vampiric demon trident showing up in our game was essentially a free win. I can't argue with that. It's going pretty incredibly so far to say the very least. Ooh, vision sharpens. Hey, there we go. We can finally read the scrolls all the time. But we did also, dang, we lost our um, evolution thing. That's too bad. Oh, and I was also wrong. By our vision sharpens, did we just get seen visible? We did. So we still have blurry vision. That's fun stuff. But it does mean we can take off this completely useless ring. So that's nice. Let's switch that out for an intelligence plus six ring, shall we? And see, that brings ignition down to 17%. Holy crap. That is very doable, all things considered. And then, I think most of these Hell Knights shouldn't be resistant to poison. So that should work well. I'm just doing a quick check of their uh, equipment here. Yeah, we have fire resistance. Doesn't look like we have any poison resistance. Perfect. Let's just keep applying that on, getting the stacks coming. And then ideally, we just have to deal with a couple of creatures here at the end. Ah, you have poison resistance. Fun stuff. That's fine, none of your friends do at the very least. So let's just start blasting, shall we? Between the poison and IMB here, we should be able to deal a decent amount of damage fairly quickly. Oof, there goes our statue form at the most inopportune of moments, like it loves to do. And, oh me oh my, there it is. Oh, Glyph's Toxic Radiation is just too strong of a spell. Far too useful in so many different uh, situations here. I guess... Ignition, once we get that online, will do a similar purpose of just absolutely shredding through these uh, larger crowds of monsters. Oh gosh, that's a, a nightmare little area in there. Tons of dragons, Moth of Wrath, Caustic Shrikes are my ultimate nemesis. If we run into none of those in that game, it will still be too many. But this is much more manageable. And luckily, that one is just in a completely optional vault, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about them. Not too bad. Tons of these little treasure vaults. Ooh, our tentacle spike got bigger. We felt genetically stable. Should have been paying more attention to what that last one was. Increased reservoir of magic. Nice. That should definitely come in handy. Oh, why did I just get linked? Did somebody have a distortion weapon? I didn't think so. It might have been a uh, distortion trap somewhere that I didn't notice. Or Zom was just being silly, of course. Never know with that goofball what's going on. But let's try and focus down the main source of our problems here. The mage. 78% chance to hit. Love to see it. And that should do the trick. Not too bad. You know, Depths 3 here was in the end so much less stressful than both Depths 1 and Depths 2 were. So if we could keep that up, keep that pattern going for the next couple of floors here, I would very much be a happy camper. What did you do, Zom? Okay, just put up a statue. That's all good, of course. What am I missing here? Uh, nothing of too much value. 
Oh, I didn't realize there was a Demon Blade of Distortion in the mix there. That would have been potentially important to note. Yeah, what a nightmare trove this is. All of those dragons and even the Caustic Shrikes are just immediately going to get enraged by the Moths of Wrath. No thank you. But fortunately, again, not at all necessary for us to uh, put ourselves out there to that extent. Not too bad. Down to 13% failure chance. Keep that fire magic coming. Ooh. That's interesting. Staff of Fire, right as we're getting that online. Might want to pick this up, even if just for the, the Royal Jelly fight or the Vaults 5 fight, if we do end up deciding to take that route instead. That is very intriguing. I'm going to do a quick peek to see if there's anything we can drop here, because once more our inventory is filling up to an outrageous extent. Can't believe we're up to three scrolls of blinking now. Holy cow. Four potions of heal wounds. Ten scrolls of teleportation. This game, in general, just had so many consumable items on the ground because, like I said at the start of the day today, uh, we absolutely burned through consumables in our Arbis trip. I did not expect to have even close to a, a half-decent supply of them for the rest of our journey. Oh, okay, Molten Gargoyles do not suffer from the same disadvantages as their more solid kindred. It's good to note. But all in all here, everything is still going just fine and dandy. All those trolls becoming uh, mited and hasted could have ended up being a slightly more tricky situation than I was maybe giving it credit for, but it is not the case. So all's well that ends well. Let's LRD with the, the nice stone walls. Spriggan Defender. That makes me suspicious. Spriggan Defenders often mean that there's a, a very specific Spriggan sitting around here somewhere. But let's maybe not throw everything into the ditch now. Dang it, what happened there? How did I get pulled? I'm guessing that was a Zom shenanigan of sorts. Oh, and we are seeing another Spriggan Defender. Again, just the more Spriggans that come pouring out of this hallway, the more suspicious I get that the Enchantress is just around the corner. So let's maybe IMB once. I would ideally like to fight my way back to a uh, single wide corridor here. Especially since the Spriggans are so fast that they're going to be getting in a lot of hits each uh, step that we take. Oh wow, one of them came over to our side. That's hilarious. Start dealing some damage from behind. Let's also not tab fight our way through while not in statue form. That's less than ideal, to say the very least. And then, you, friend, can uh, retreat this way. Just go nuts. Thank you. <laughs> we just leave them so that we can heal up in peace, not worrying about when they are going to turn around and betray us. And is the Enchantress here? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was just a pack of Spriggans. But I'm always cautious ready for that to uh, bite us in the butt for sure. Hello friend. It feels so sad taking out somebody who was on our side for uh, a decent chunk of the time there. Let's switch over to our resistance from corrosion ring. I'm sure that we aren't taking any of that nasty status effect here against these buddies. And not too shabby. Again, so far this floor has been a multitude times easier than our first couple floors of depths were. I spoke too soon. Hello, Boris, my friend. Um, I think you are just going to get phantom mirrored right away. And then our iron shot it doesn't go far enough to hit our friendly buddy, so we can do that right away. And, hmm, what's the next step here? Probably just keep Iron Shot in you, right? But if we take one step back, we can at least blast you. 
And the nice uh, stone walls deal a decent chunk of change higher than the regular untreated walls of the dungeon. So that's not too bad. And then I want to not be in the firing range of my own copy of Boris. That would have been an un un unfortunate way to go. An unfortunate way to go. Oh geez, thank you, Zom, for yet another roller coaster ride of teleportation. Always so much fun, so enjoyable for the whole family. But let's run over to this scroll here, immediately read that bad boy, try and get this vampiric trident ranked up as soon as possible, even though, hmm. Crap, now that I think about it for a second, maybe I should actually be spending those on our electric demon trident, because that will do slightly better for the final section of the game. I guess kind of dependent on which enemies we end up facing, but how many runes do we have? So we still just have the two runes, the two S branch runes, but we're just about at the point where we're going to be trying for our third rune here. I was just trying to get enough experience for ignition to get down to a decent cast rate and down to 14% is definitely getting there. Largely due to the fact that we've actually faced off against a decent number of the higher level uniques. Because that's always a nice chunk of experience coming your way. By Suzanne, Boris, all good stuff. Scary, but good stuff. Ooh, and I should really be using these crystal walls to our advantage. To truly just blast our way through all these bad boys. Perfect. Curious, what hit us that hard? Were we out of statue form for a moment? Wasn't paying close enough attention. We still have one pip of resist cold, right? Okay, we do. That's good. Oops. Accidentally did our irradiation ability around us, but that's not the end of the world for sure. Let's maybe pop down in here, make sure that we're not facing off too many enemies at once. I also realized, I think, sometime during last stream, but didn't say it out loud, but definitely internalized it after the fact that I think as soon as you're given the ability to be flying, the game constantly has you doing it now, just to take that off of your plate of things to do. Ever since Airstrike got changed to not deal extra damage to flying players, it uh, was no longer quite as necessary to constantly be aware of, am I flying right now? Am I flying right now? So developers just made it a little bit more straightforward for everyone involved which is nice and holy cow we just can go face to face with a uh, berserker hey impressive stuff rocktopod impressive moves do you love me this vampiric trident let's keep her going here just about oh really just about done uh depths four so let's head down, maybe being a little bit cautious if the gateway into Zot looks like it's guarded by some scary monsties. We can always just get the heck out of here for the time being. Either head into vaults for a little bit more experience, or we could even just try our luck. See if switching over our rings gets Ignition up to a fully castable spot. Because so I know that it has been fluctuating our uh, success rate just due to the fact that we... Uh, I've been switching on and off of some of our intelligence rings in order to get the resistances that have been necessary. So these are some wicked quick blades we're up against, a plus seven and a plus five. Jeez Louise. Glad that we're able to just ambiently hurt all these bad boys, even though our chances to hit our slain is actually half decent as well, seeing as how we just tabbed our way through the end of that fight. And the general store is one of my favorite stores because they could have absolutely anything in it. And I'd love for a few more enchant weapons. I mean, scrolls of blinking if I'm being really greedy, but beggars can't be choosers. Let's see. The amulet Lorhofit. We get weak to cold or vulnerability. Not great. Reflection is always fun, though. Strength plus four, shield plus five. Not horrible at the end of the day, but not quite what we're looking for. I will buy a scroll of fear just right off the bat. We didn't have all of our slots full. A ring of slain could actually be fairly decent for us. We don't always rely on our magic on this character anymore. We oftentimes are just using statue form and our, uh, our demon trident to get the job done. 
We'll also pick up another scroll of silence, though. Just in case we find ourselves up against a, a tough spellcaster of sorts. And interesting. A juggernaut. A eh, friend? I always have to remind myself. I think it's like 120 damage that you hit for total. Is indeed. Okay, I can probably just take one of you on your own without too, too much trouble. As long as Zom doesn't come and bite us in the butt in any way, and in fact just did good things for us, confusing the Juggernaut themselves. I'd love to see it. Thanks, Zom. You're a real one. And let's keep it going. Ooh, a magic scroll shop? That is lovely. Holy crap, three scrolls of enchant armor. I sure wish we could wear armor. That would be nice. Do I have any enchant armor scrolls on me, though? I do not. Did I leave any on the ground before? I did. Okay, so we don't actually have to spend any money buying those. I just realized that I believe our hat isn't enchanted. Oh, it is fully enchanted. I guess our shield, though, could go up. How much do those cost? 360 gold? It's honestly not bad. I think I will buy that. Buy another scroll of fog, just in case. They're cheap anyway, and they can definitely save our lives in a pickle. And then I might check how many magic mapping scrolls do I have. I have six on me. That's enough for all of Zot. Probably don't need to buy any more. So, let's just read all of these armor scrolls, enchanting up our shield here. If we do switch to a tower shield, it does seem like it would be the uh, the artifact one that we dropped on the floor earlier. Not super likely, again, due to the negative telly, especially since... Oh no, we still lose our ability to read scrolls sometimes, but still especially since we have so many scrolls of blinking and so many scrolls of teleportation now. We're no longer in the, the tough old days. Dang, I was hoping to get close enough to this Earth Shaman to just immediately backstab them in their sleep. That would have been nice. But it is what it is. And okay, we get some liquidation of the ground around us. Thanks, Zong. Best part about that effect is, of course, just the uh, the fancy colors flashing. Oh, and hello, Earth Mage. Do I want to maybe stay out of stone form this time? It's not so often that we engage in a fight just as our statue form wears off, and it's actually advantageous to us to potentially leave it as so. And now we can pop it on for the rest of the fight. That's pretty sweet. Thanks, Zahm, for the completely useless switch. Love to see it. And so we continue. Honestly, all in all, things going absolutely fantastic so far here on uh, Depths 5. You were able to get your first caster wind on Gargoyle Hill Earth Elementals because of my YouTube videos. Just want to pop in and say thanks. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Honestly, I'm so happy to, uh, to have helped out, even in, in a small way there in somebody's first win, because that's definitely always super exciting. I'll, I'll never forget my first win as well. So thanks for dropping in for and saying hi as well. Appreciate having you around, and hopefully we can continue to help some players in the future. I guess as long as they're not playing as halflings, because halfling got a little bit rough <laughs> in the middle there. And geez, also a bad time for our statue form to run out. What the heck are you doing to us? Zom. Let's cure out of our uh, confusion state as soon as possible there. Switch over to this. That time, holy crap, the uh, a mutator just got transformed. Or I guess, oh, maybe a natural shapeshifter this time and not Zom themselves. That's good to note. But still glad to uh, not have to deal with that. Though we might still be slightly resistant to mutation at the very least. Yeah, we're somewhat resistant to further mutation, which I think is a 30% chance. So that's pretty solid for these uh, later stages in the game. And in fact, I would love it if we could hold on to that mutation for our trip through uh, the slime pit as well. And here we go, me oh my. We immediately get teleported into what I'm assuming is the gateway down to Zot. We just start blasting. We could make enough noise and potentially use like our condenser vein to deal enough damage on top of that and take out everyone. 
but it's definitely not an ideal situation to be starting this fight from. Oh, Zot. Oh, you, uh, you play with my emotions here. Surprised not everyone is immediately running towards us, but we were able to get in a few hits against the, the Shadow Dragon here in advance. Let's try and take out these buddies before the whole welcoming party comes around the corner, shall we? Oh, geez Louise. Still looking good. Getting hit by a little bit of the web server leg there, which I definitely should have tried to account for instead of just slamming on the auto fight key over and over again. That could have gone a whole lot worse if a statue form had run out in the midst of our uh, fight there. But of course, never didn't have it, as always. And so we continue. I should also be using uh, Oglev's Toxic Radiation here. They're, it's definitely an amazing spell against Draconian packs in particular. Every Draconian except for the green ones is not resistant to poison, unlike a whole lot of the other creatures that we find ourselves um, fighting up against at this stage in the game. There we go. All in all here, not going too shabby. I can even use LRD right on this bone statue to just slam it with some damage. And bada boom bada bing, that should be most of this little Zot entrance vault cleared. Perfect. So we continue our journey. This place needs a little bit of atmosphere. What did you do, Zom? Okay, you just made us trail some fancy smoke behind us. That's okay. Don't scare me like that. But, oh dang, I really wish we were playing as a Palantonga or a Naga right now. It's not often that you get to see the Black Knight's Barding, and it's an absolutely incredible piece of work. Let's see, another shop here. Antique Weapon Boutique. Unfortunately, not very useful to us. We've been pretty set in our ways with this Demon Trident that we've had from a pretty early point in the game. I know Urug was an Orc one, but we had to leave her alone for a little bit before we could actually take her on and steal her incredible weapon. But that's still, all things considered, and not relatively far sooner than you otherwise might expect to find a demonic trident, and especially one with the exact brand that you'd like to have. And that should be just about it. Perfect. So let us check where we're at. Down to a 7% failure rate with ignition. And if we check on our ring status right now, we're wearing one of our rings of intelligence. And is that it? Huh. So we could potentially switch out. Like Udu Castle. Maybe in Quaestress for intelligence rings. And that should bring our casting failure rate down all the way. Protection from cold, we probably want in slime for any of the blue or the azure slimes, I believe they're called. Same with corrosion, absolutely necessary. Willpower, not so much. I guess a lot of the effects that would normally be checking willpower in the slime pits have been changed to ignore willpower. A lot of the, the fancy eyes and stuff. Is that worth the switch? Scary stuff. Quaestress might be the, the better pick, though. Just getting rid of the RN. AC doesn't do a whole lot of good against a lot of the enemies we'll be fighting down there. Especially since we just already get to a fairly half-decent spot with just statue form on its own. So in exchange for being able to just ignition the crap out of everyone, could be a good trade-off. And so, I think without further ado, Let's head up to Slime, shall we? At least dip our toes in, see how she goes. I'd totally forgotten until very recently that there's a unique that can show up in Slime. Because I always just dive through and I've never fully explored floors, I don't know if I've ever ran into Dissolution. Which means we'll probably run into the, this run just to uh, make things interesting. Let's see, our tentacle spike grows even bigger. We feel strong-willed. Ooh, so we could probably switch off our willpower ring now. That's awesome. And iridescent scales cover our body completely. Let's check that out. Back up to plus six AC. We have a large, vicious spike. Very cool. I also didn't notice that we got very sharp teeth at some point. Huh. 
I do love the complement of mutations that you end up getting by the end of a Zom game. Super fun.